them? My brother-in-law has a seminary degree. He's one of the best people I know. We disagree philosophically on much. Um, he's a great example of why I hate it when people put religious people all in a box yeah. and say they're all idiots or they're all evil or they're this or that because, you know, he's not. He's, you know, he's a, he's a Southern Baptist preacher guy you know he's a businessman but his background is is as a minister and you know he's um he's got some uh, in my opinion some unfortunate ideas but he's also one of the most generous and respectful and kindest people i've ever met and i don't say that lightly he is one of the most impressive people i know as I love a human that, yeah. and um he doesn't fit in your box. He doesn't fit in a cookie cutter. You know, he, he, he's not, he's more than a label, even though he is a, a conservative Christian mm -hmm. and he and I, he's the one ex exception. While my mother and father were busy trying to fix me their, you know, their faces are blush red with shame at their failure as a parent and my failure as a son. And I'm a blight on the family tree and blah, blah, blah. And it's just been uh, 10 years of conflict and tears and arguments. And even to the point where uh, earlier this year, I blocked them both on my phone because I simply had to draw a hard line, a hard boundary to keep the sermons from coming in. They were always just, you know, you're going to hell. Uh, you'll be ashes under the feet of the believer if you do not turn. You know, you oh. can only do so much of that. And you have to, you have to draw, a, you have to draw a line and say, you don't have permission to do this anymore. But unlike them, Jeff was like, let's, let's go, let's, let me get under, into your head. And we would, so we've gone out five, six times and had thick, you know, even passionate conversations where we sort of hash out a lot of this type of stuff. And he's never been anything but respectful. He didn't, it doesn't give me that sort of, you know, that condescending mannequin stare that many people do. You know, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, I'm, you know what? One day I know you'll meet the love of Jesus again. It's that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. He doesn't do any of that. Uh, he's had my back in, I don't know how many different circumstances. And uh, he's been a great steward of my reputation. He's one of those people who's like, Seth's a great guy. We disagree about some stuff, but you know, Seth, you, you need, he's been out there like, an advocate for me as a human being when so many others would not. And, mm. and so he gives me hope. Uh, I think many of the others on the family tree are curious, but they're not curious enough where they really want to talk about it. And I think, and this is just a theory, I think it's because they're secretly insecure that something I say might make sense. Mm. Uh, yeah, exactly. Know? it's ter many uh, the t many of the reasons someone will say mm, you know what i'll pray for you or i hope you find what you're looking for as you said and then they walk they're already physically walking the other direction <laughs> they're already getting <laughs> yeah. ready to hang up the phone well uh, what is that about and it's not because they're anxious to share their faith i think it many in many cases they're terrified as i was terrified at one point in my life you know when i was watching a christopher hitchens video and he was debating a rabbi what happens when the guy who's supposed to be the guy in the wrong, the antagonist, the guy who's completely out of his mind, what happens when that guy actually makes sense? Mm -hmm. Well, it changes everything. Right. And I, I think for many of them, they're, they'd rather just kind of keep me at a safe distance. We don't have to get into the meat and potatoes of any harder conversations. And, and they live mostly a cultural faith anyway. It's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, prayers before meals and God gave us a beautiful day today. Uh, but they, you know, if you have to look at their lives, they're mostly secular lives anyway. They, they call the ambulance when they have a medical emergency. They lock their doors at night, even though they claim they're divinely protected. They, uh, they live their lives as if we're on, we're the, our own, but they use the sort of the, the lip service, the window dressing of religion to sort of color their existence here on earth. So that's a theory. I don't know if it's true or not. Yeah, no, I, I tend to lean the same direction uh, when I was a Christian. So I, I, my Christian faith became, or my fervency for the claims of Christianity became much more intense as I was approaching the deconversion slope. And it's because you're becoming desperate that these claims are absolutely true. After all, when you deconvert at like 30 years plus, and you've been a Christian since you, as long as you can remember, you're invested. Like yeah. you got, you got something going on there. 
And, um, you know, I went to Christian university, you know, I, I was involved in ministry, hosted numerous things, um, participated in relief efforts, blah, 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 blah. And you become desperate. You're like, okay. And then I think one of the last things I did is I just asked around for people about the evidence of God in their lives. And it all kind of turns out to be nothing really, except for something really significant. And we've already touched on it. It's the feeling. It, if there's something lasting in the life of a Christian, by my experience, I won't speak for everybody, because some people are very resilient, positive, upbeat human beings, but I always heard the same thing in small groups. And what I would hear was guilt, shame. I could be reading more, I could be praying more. Um, my relationship with God isn't as strong as I would like it to be. And I'm thinking, man, if God is real, that's what we're all thinking. Because yeah. none of us really have that solid relationship with this, what is otherwise an imaginary or pretend being. And our interactions with that, how do you even begin to characterize that and then justify that without sounding like you're just describing normal events in life that are not unique to you, but are true for everyone? Um, I'm interested to see how people use their faith, their belief as a, as a way to cope with the fact that they, they hate living in an uncertain world where... Yeah, you know there isn't a divine plan, and they aren't processing the idea that they'll never see grandma again or a child who died of cancer. And I understand the function of religion and how people have used it. It's funny. There's a, it's not a great film, but there's a film called Prometheus that is directed by Ridley Scott. And it's a funny. I've seen that once. It's a funny uh, observation that somebody had, and I think it was right. Uh, I'm not giving really anything away, but our uh, our protagonist is a scientist, right? who holds to a faith in God. And it is made obvious and apparent that human life was actually seeded on this earth by aliens long, long, long ago. They, they transported themselves here and they put sort of the seeds of our DNA in the water. Yeah. And then that is sort of how evolution started. And that's how, that is the story of human origins, according to Prometheus. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that our protagonist is a scientist who understands that humans came from alien life. And yet when they ask her why she believed in God, she said, because that is what I choose to believe. And I'm like, this is what it's like talking to a lot of religious people. Yeah. You've already seen the evidence of the origins of you, all of humankind, but you still choose to believe the supernatural explanation, which makes no sense. It yeah. is frustrating at times. That was a fascinating movie. Yeah, I seen that one time. Um, that's a part of the alien uh, yeah, yeah. saga, right? Yeah. The the things it's that a flawed film. It's it's got the pieces are greater than the whole of yeah. Prometheus. But it, I mean, it, Ridley Scott film is always worth seeing. But it, it was an interesting commentary. And there's even I think a meme out there that's like scientists sees proof of evolution, believes in God anyway. And that's often yeah. how I think we feel whenever we're talking to people about the data and the facts. You know, my buddy Anthony Magnabosco runs the website streetepistemology.com, which talks about using the Socratic method questions. It's not what you believe, but the path that you got to your belief. You know, how did yeah. you get to your belief and why? Whether it's about God or something else. And it's fascinating to see how many people he speaks to on camera out on the street have no idea how they got to where they believe they just believe it. It's right. the amount of the, the lack of self-reflection is truly telling. And it just shows you how much we assume and how much we inherit and how much we accept without challenging. And, and we get that from as children, from other people that we trust or as an authority or people in positions of power who tell us what to think and believe is, is that the short answer here? I, well, I mean, people believe for a host of reasons. In my case, it was, uh, it was all we knew. I was an, I was a child, a vulnerable kid, impressionable young person who trusted their guardian. I trusted my parents who they are, they're the ones who know. And so uh, I congratulated myself throughout my youth that I was, I've got the truth. You know, it's not because I happen to be born into a Christian home in the middle of the Bible belt, USA. No, no, no. I mean, if I, I was telling myself, I, I just happened to, I was fortunate enough to receive the truth. 
not realizing if I'd been born in Mexico, I'd likely be Catholic. If I was born in China, I'd probably practice some Eastern religion. If I was born in Pakistan, I'd be an Islamist or Muslim. Um, you know, you, you congratulate yourself. You feel pretty good about yourself. You've got the answer while everybody else is still searching. So that yeah. feeds the ego a little bit. And uh, you've got everybody else around who's doing and saying the same stuff. I didn't. I wasn't aware that I knew any atheists when I was a young person or even young adult. Everybody I knew was Christian. The stuff they did was Christian. The music they listened to was Christian. The jewelry they wore was Christian. Everything yeah. was reinforcing it. You didn't have a whole lot of motivation to go out and tap on the glass and find out if there was any truth to this stuff, you know?